John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. Our video today covers web and smartphone tools for wilderness navigation. Between your computer and phone, you have pretty much everything you need to research a trip online, print maps for free, and stay found when you're in the backcountry. Here's what you're going to learn today. The best source for backcountry GPS tracks, the best website to make and print free topographic maps, the best backcountry GPS phone app, how to see your exact climbing route in Google Earth, how to get map and driving directions to a trailhead with no street address, and how to turn your phone into an altimeter, barometer, compass, inclinometer, show your UTM coordinates, and display maps. Let's get started. Now, before we get into the good stuff, I will start with a little disclaimer. There are two main problems with using your smartphone in the backcountry. One is battery life, and the second is damage from dirt, impact, or water. Here's two solutions, some kind of extra power source and a sturdy case for your phone. It can be very helpful to have a GPS track of your trip. Once you have a track file, you can load it onto your phone for navigation with the GPS app or import the track into mapping software to show your exact route on your map. There are three ways to get a GPS track. One, downloaded from the web or sent to you by a friend, two, recorded by you on a previous trip, and three, drawn by you on mapping software. For the first of these, the best online source I've found for GPS tracks is gpses.com. GPSes is a worldwide track sharing website for just about every activity you can think of. Here in the Pacific Northwest, there are hundreds of climbing and hiking routes with more being added all the time. I've made a short tutorial video on how to use GPSs. You can see it at croc.org or search YouTube for Columbia River Orienteering Club. The map is the fundamental tool for navigation and CalTOPO is simply the best mapping software available, either free or for purchase. It's completely free, browser-based software with nothing to download. You can use over a dozen different map base layers, add shaded relief, make marker points and free form lines, export marker points and lines as a GPX file, import GPX files and show them on your map as I've done here, show a UTM grid and print maps at just about any size and scale you can imagine. I've also made a short tutorial on CalTOPO. See it at croc.org or search YouTube for Columbia River Orienteering Club. Now let's move to smartphones. Currently, the best available phone app for backcountry use is Gaia GPS. For a mere cost of $20, it turns your smartphone into a GPS receiver that in many ways is superior to a top-of-the-line dedicated GPS. Gaia is at the top for several reasons. One, it's focused on backcountry use, not for driving or sharing your hike statistics on social media. Two, it has lots of different map layers to choose from, like satellite and open source maps. This lets you select exactly the type of map coverage you need for your trip. And three, it's easy to manage a large collection of tracks and waypoints. As an example of map layers, here's three images from Gaia for Mount St. Helens. These are screen grabs taken right from my phone. We have a standard topo map on the left, an open source hiking map in the middle, and a satellite view on the right. Note that you do not need to have cell phone coverage to use your phone as a GPS receiver. However, you do need to download map layers over Wi-Fi or cell coverage for use when you do not have coverage. I've made a short tutorial video on how to use Gaia GPS. Again, see it at croc.org or search YouTube for Columbia River Orienteering Club. When researching an off-trail hiking or climbing route at home, it can be extremely helpful to view the route in Google Earth. Here's how to do it. Again, it all starts with the GPX track file. Use a free web converter to change the GPX file into a KML file, which is simply a file format that plays nicely with Google Earth. The web converter I use is appropriately called KML2GPX.com. Save the converted KML file onto your hard drive, double click it, and it should open in Google Earth. Here's a screen grab of the upper portion of the standard Disappointment Cleaver route on Mount Rainier, drawn in red. From here, you can zoom, pan, spin, fly over, and do all that fun Google Earth stuff. K 
careful study of your route in three dimensions like this can give you a great mental picture of what you can expect on a backcountry hike or climb. You can also make some screen grabs, print them, or save the images onto your phone. This next tip is not exactly wilderness navigation, but it sure can be a help to get you to the right trailhead. Google Maps is wonderful at finding a specific address, but not so helpful if you're trying to get to a remote trailhead on a logging road. If you enter latitude longitude coordinates in a decimal degree format into a Google Map search, you'll get a map and driving directions to exactly that point. There are several ways to get latitude longitude coordinates in decimal degrees. One easy way is to zoom in to your trailhead in Google Maps, right click and choose the What's Here option. Doing this brings up a pop-up box that shows the latitude longitude coordinates of that precise location. You can now copy and paste these coordinates into any mapping software, email them to friends who need the directions, put them in a trip report, etc. If you're a climber in the Pacific Northwest, here's a great resource that brings together everything we just talked about. The Mazamas, a Portland, Oregon mountaineering organization, have a free library of maps, GPX tracks, KML files, and trailhead coordinates for more than 50 of the most popular climbs in the Northwest. You can see them all at mazamas.org, resources, maps for hiking and climbing. Now let's get into a few useful smartphone apps. Many newer smartphones have a barometer, which turns your phone into an altimeter. I found that phone apps show elevation that's very comparable to my expensive altimeter watch. Here are two free altimeter apps I've been using with good results. The left one is simply called Altimeter. This shows your altitude along with current latitude and longitude. You'll find lots of similar apps that do pretty much the same thing. On the right is a little fancier model called bar o meter that shows barometric pressure. You can use a rising or falling barometer as a rough way to forecast incoming weather. Most iPhone users have probably discovered the free Compass app that comes along with your phone. Did you know that the Compass also shows your latitude and longitude coordinates right on the bottom of the screen? This means that anyone lost in the woods with an iPhone has a means to know their exact location, even if they have never downloaded any special apps like, like what we're talking about here. And if you do a long touch on these coordinates, you can copy and paste them into a text or email. Note to iPhone users, the second page of your Compass app has an inclinometer. You can use this to show the angle of a slope. This can be helpful to assess potential avalanche conditions or to brag to your friends about how steep your climb was. Normally, an inclinometer is only found on dedicated devices like the one shown above or as an option on expensive compasses. Here are two free apps that show your current UTM coordinates and let you email or text your position. If you had one of these apps and a map with a printed UTM grid, you could always plot your exact position on the map and never get lost. That is a powerful navigation tool. Also, if you were lost without a map and had cell phone coverage, you could tell 911 your exact location and wait there for a rescue. Another cool use for your phone is to display actual maps. Now, I would not recommend that you rely on this as your only map source, but it can be a great backup to a printed map. Think about this. If your printed map gets lost or wet, it's really nice to have a copy on your phone. And doing so is free, doesn't weigh anything, and just takes a minute, so why not do it? Here's how to accomplish this on the iPhone. Android folks, you probably have something similar. First, you need a PDF file of your map. There are various ways to do this. I like to view and save a PDF using CalTOPO. Step two, email the PDF to yourself as a file attachment and open it on the mail app that comes with your phone. Step three, do what Apple calls a long touch on the file attachment by pressing it for two or three seconds. And finally, choose copy to iBooks. You can do this for different maps and build up a map library on your phone. This is what the saved PDF file looks like in iBooks. Here's a screen grab from my phone showing a PDF map series made in CalTOPO of a Mount Rainier climb. Here's the first overview page showing the entire climb. The red line is an imported GPX track that shows the entire route. Here's the first map of the route at 1 to 24,000 scale. 
And here's the second map of the route, also at 1 to 24,000. Even zooming in really close like this, we still get remarkably good detail. Again, this is a screen grab taken right from my phone. Well, we covered a lot of ground. Let's summarize. You now know how to get GPS tracks from the web, learn the best source for free topographic maps, know the best backcountry GPS app for your phone, how to see your route in Google Earth, learn how to get trailhead coordinates and directions, and learn about free apps to make your phone an altimeter, barometer, compass, inclinometer, show your coordinates, and display maps. Thanks a lot for watching, and please give us a like and a happy comment on YouTube if you found this video helpful. Thank you.